Moreover, there is no difference between fossils hundreds of millions of years old and their modern descendants. For instance, a 400 million year old shark and a modern shark have exactly the same structure. Similarly, there is no difference between a 100 million year old ant and a modern ant, a 135 million year old dragonfly and a modern dragonfly, a 100 million year old turtle and a modern turtle, or a 55 million year old bat and a modern bat. That is, all living kinds were created by God and did not undergo any evolution after their creation. On the other hand, there have been a few fossils that were touted as transitional forms by evolutionists, but later turned out to be nothing of the sort. One of the most important of these alleged transitional forms was the fossil of a fish called the coelacanth. For years, evolutionists claimed that this creature, which was only known in the fossil record, had characteristics similar to those of land-dwelling animals. It had, they argued, primitive legs and a primitive lung. These evolutionist claims about the coelacanth were advanced as a scientific fact and imaginary drawings picturing the animal crawling onto land from water made their way even to textbooks. It came as a great shock to evolutionists when a living example of the supposedly extinct coelacanth was caught in the Indian Ocean in 1938. It was then seen that the fish was no different from the fish of our day. Contrary to the claims of evolutionists, coelacanths had neither legs nor primitive lungs. What was worse, the coelacanth, supposedly a creature readying itself to make the leap from sea to land, was in reality a fish that lived only in the deep waters of the oceans, never approaching to within 180 meters of the surface. Another alleged transitional form has been a fossil bird called Archaeopteryx. For decades, evolutionists argued that this creature was an intermediary between reptiles and birds. However, the seventh Archaeopteryx fossil discovered in 1992 revealed that the creature had a sternum. That is, the chest bone essential for flight muscles. This proved that the animal was a perfect flying bird. The evolutionist claims about the claw-like nails on the wings of the Archaeopteryx also failed, since similar structures were also discovered in modern birds like the Hoatzin. Because of such reasons, one of the foremost defenders of the theory of evolution, the Harvard paleontologist Stephen Jay Gould, had to admit that Archaeopteryx could not be considered as a transitional form. When we examine the structures of different animal groups, we can see that it is impossible for an evolutionary process to have occurred between them. For instance, it is impossible for fish that have their respiratory systems, excretory systems, muscle structures, and metabolisms completely designed to live in water to have transformed into land-dwelling animals by stepping out of the water. Living groups on land are also all very different from one another. Evolutionists claim that birds evolve from reptiles by random mutations. However, reptiles are cold-blooded, whereas birds are warm-blooded. The bodies of birds are covered with complexly structured feathers, whereas the bodies of reptiles are covered with scales that bear no similarity to feathers. Birds have a lung system that is unlike that of any other land-dwelling animal. The aerodynamic properties of the bird wings cannot be explained by evolution at all. 
It is impossible for wings to have gradually developed as evolutionists claim because a half developed wing is not an advantage but a fatal disadvantage. Evolutionists also claim that some reptiles transformed into mammals. However, these two living groups are also very distinct from each other. Reptiles lay eggs while mammals give birth to their offspring. As opposed to the scales of reptiles, the bodies of mammals are covered with fur. The lactation mechanism is peculiar to mammals, and evolutionists can never explain its origin. Faced with these realities made clear by the fossil record, evolutionists directed all their attention to the claim that man evolved from ape-like creatures. 6,500 different ape species have lived so far and the majority of them are extinct. The skulls of these extinct apes, both big and small, constituted a great resource for evolutionists on which to exercise their imaginations freely. Arranging the skulls of these extinct ape species from the smallest to the biggest and adding some skulls of vanished human races to the series, evolutionists concocted the scenario of human evolution. The most important role of this scenario is given to the extinct ape species called Australopithecus. The first Australopithecus fossil was found in 1924 by a paleontologist named Raymond Dart. Since then, evolutionists argue that this ape species, the name of which means southern ape, is a man-like creature. However, when Australopithecus and chimpanzee skeletons are compared, it is seen that there is no important difference between the two. In the face of this fact, evolutionists hypothesize that Australopithecus walked upright on its two feet differently from other apes. However, two world-renowned anatomists, Lord Solly Zuckerman and Professor Charles Oxnard, refuted this allegation. Simply put, Australopithecus, advanced as the ancestor of man by evolutionists, is merely an extinct ape species. On the other hand, fossils that are included by evolutionists under imaginary classifications, such as Homo erectus, Homo ergaster, or Homo sapien archaic, in fact, belong to different human races. When these fossils are inspected, it is seen that their skeletons are essentially the same as those of people living today. The only dissimilarities are a few structural differences in their skulls. But differences like these are to be found in different human races alive on Earth today. The famous evolutionist paleontologist Richard Leakey admits that the difference between the skulls classified as Homo erectus and those of modern men is only racial. These differences are probably no more pronounced than we see today between the separate geographical races of modern humans.